Hello and welcome to Real to Real from Blessed Sacrament Church in Holyoke, a parish founded in 1913. 100 years ago, many Irish immigrants left their homeland to seek their own version of the American dream. Holyoke was a destination for many as this city was booming with industry. As the city grew, people moved away from the downtown area out into the suburbs. Everything revolved around the church back then, and so 150 Irish families decided to start their own church right here in their own neighborhood. Steve Kiltonic now has the story of Blessed Sacrament Parish. They came to Holyoke from County Kerry, County Mayo, and County Clare, from Connaught, Dublin, Cork, and Kerry. They were all part of the great waves of Irish immigration to America in the mid to late 1800s. And they came primarily to build the railroads and the dams, and to work in the many paper mills and silk factories that sprang up in Holyoke. Besides jobs, the Irish found religious freedom in the many Catholic churches built near the turn of the century, including Sacred Heart. According to Father Robert Gentile, Sacred Heart was the largest parish in the Holyoke Deanery at the time, and as it grew, expanded into the city outskirts. There really was a need for another parish. So the, the people of the Elmwood section really are the ones that came together and devised the idea of, of Blessed Sacrament Parish itself. Economically, they were advancing and becoming wealthier, and as they did, they moved up the hill from Holyoke, from the flats up to uh, the Northampton Street. Springfield Bishop Thomas Bevan divided Sacred Heart Parish, opening the door for Blessed Sacrament to be established in June 1913 with Father John Lunny, its first pastor. It took parishioners and Father Lunny only one year to raise $65,000 to construct this building behind me in 1914, which served as the parish's first church. Nine years later, an elementary school was added with classrooms on the top floor. Ellie and Jack Tuig are longtime parishioners. Ellie's mother was one of the parish founders. My oldest brother was one of the first children baptized in the parish. And she used to push him around in his carriage and collect money from the parishioners up and down the streets of Elmwood to, to build the first church. My mother loved her church and she served her church well. She always was in on doing anything that was going on. When Father Lunny was transferred in 1913, Father Michael Cavanaugh was appointed pastor. He served for 11 years and bought the land the future church will be built on. In 1934, Father John Keating became the parish's spiritual leader. After Father Keating passed away suddenly in 1945, Father Jeremiah McCarthy arrived. He helped raise $200,000, which served as the financial foundation for the new church and school. In 1951, Father McCarthy died and Father Daniel Hennessy was quickly chosen to head the fast-growing congregation. Legend has it that Hennessy was picked specifically to build this church because he had built the church up in Palmer, and he came from a construction family, so he had a lot of experience building. At first, Father Hennessy's radical church-in-the-round design was not welcomed by most parishioners. Oh, we were so shocked. <laughs> it was unbelievable that this was going to be our church. We, we were not happy. It didn't look like a church. This would have been the very first time that, that you would have ever seen a priest's face as he celebrated Mass. It was the first church of its kind, of its structure in the country, and there was only one other church at the time that was similar to this, and that was located in Rome itself. Ground was broken in 1952, and on June 15, 1953, Springfield Bishop Christopher Weldon and Father Hennessy dedicated the new church. The church was so novel that Life magazine featured a pictorial essay and article in their July 6, 1953 issue. The construction boom continued under Hennessy as a new rectory and school was completed later that year. And in 1961, a new convent opened for the Sisters of St. Joseph. They have done phenomenal work. Our, the kids who they have taught have gone on to do great things in our, in our communities and, and in our world. Betty Kane, who has taught at Blessed Sacrament School since 1979, has some of her own family history displayed on the altar. William Kane, Betty's brother-in-law, attended Sacred Heart School and Munson Academy, where he was an outstanding athlete. During World War II, First Lieutenant Kane joined the paratroopers, but was killed in 1944 during the Battle of the Bulge. He was 24. 
After the war, his parents donated a baptismal font in his memory to the church. It was removed from the sanctuary and placed in storage for years. Father Gentile restored and rededicated the font and placed it on the altar for all to see and enjoy. Every time we come here to Mass, we have that as an icon, so to speak, that we can just look at and it brings back so many memories. It is so very special to everybody in our family. We're just so very pleased that it was able to be brought back and reinstituted in the church. Over the years, 10 pastors have served the parish. All the pastors that have served here have, have done the best they could and they were incredible people. Uh, they were good men who, who worked really hard to try to build this community. Blessed Sacrament has celebrated its anniversary with a year-long series of events, beginning in January with an opening mass when Centennial Year banners were unveiled. At the St. Patrick's Day Parade, the parish presented a special float. And in fact, it won the, the first place in the religious floats category. In April, over 800 people packed Holyoke High Auditorium to see music through the decades, an entertaining musical put together by the school. There was even a guest appearance by the Sisters of St. Joseph. In June, the parish dedicated Mary's Garden at the back of the church. We took what was otherwise a desolate kind of space, really made a beautiful garden for Mary to honor her. This October, the annual fall festival took place. We had, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 vendors here, all kinds of events and activities for our kids. We had food and, and drink, and it was just a great time. Ready? Good. At the festival, Father Gentile buried a time capsule under the Mary Garden statue. Father Gentile's wish for the future of the parish is simple. That it can continue to, to maintain that loving, caring, service-oriented nature that it's, it's always had and to really make it flourish and grow. As their pastor, I've been very blessed to be here and I'm very grateful that, that our bishop and God lets me serve here and serve these people because it, it has been a great experience. As Blessed Sacrament Parish concludes its 100-year journey of faith and community, the road ahead will be made much easier because of the people who have blazed the trail before them. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.